What is up guys? Welcome back to the garage. Today we're working on the Bulbo. If you ever own yourself a Bulbo 240, I think it may be a problem on other models, but it's mostly a problem on the 240s. Of course, you know, they have their little bits here and there. You can see mine has had some interesting changes made to it, like those very unfitting headlights. Not very proportionate to the rest of the car, of course. But, if you've had the pleasure of owning one of these guys, you may know they have a problem with the temperature sensor compensation boards. It's that little uh, chip inside the gauge cluster that compensates for variables in the temperature sensor. It's very odd, but Volvo is very odd in themselves. Today, we're going to work on fixing that one. Very simple DIY. i show you how to take apart the cluster and replace the temperature sensor bore with this little piece of wire with two pins on it. Simple DIY. You can make this at home. You can order the one off IPD. Either one. So here we are, now in the Volvo, and if you'll notice, you can see my fuel gauge and my temperature gauge, of course, starting to go up, the car just turned into accessory mode, but the temperature gauge isn't going to read very accurately. It'll read, but it's not what it's supposed to be reading, like you may see it read quarter or third or half, or maybe, maybe it's overheating completely when you've just started up, maybe it started overheating in the first 30 seconds of you starting the car up. It happens. My car currently says it's still pretty cold. I've been driving it all day. I actually just got to the garage a few minutes ago. So there's no way it's that cold. But go ahead and we'll do this compensa compensation board fix. Of course, she's a little bit dusty. I don't clean it out very often, but you know, not too hard to fix here. Uh, my car has this all taped up, of course, because these panels like to fly out. The pins are all broken on them. But pretty simple stuff. We'll go ahead and pull off these knobs here to start. You give them an old firm pull. It's old stuff, but you're not going to hurt it. They are notched, of course, so they can only go on one way. Pull off the dimmer one. This is a little bit hard to get off because it's a little bit smaller. But still notched like the other one. Go ahead and send it up top over there. Or in the tray on the right side of the dash. It's super helpful for this kind of stuff. So we can pry out this faceplate here. We'll disconnect the fog light switch. Get the bulb and the switch disconnected. And you see there'll be two Phillips on this side. Now I'll remove the panels on this side. Just simple push-in pins. Mine are worn down so they come out a little bit easier, but yours won't be too hard to come out either. You'll see four Phillips, two on either side. Once you have all four of your screws out, you should go ahead and grab on the sides here. Give it a pretty firm pull. You won't take much. It will be a lot easier for you if you take out the steering wheel. Fair warning. It'll be loads easier. But, pretty stubborn myself. So I'm going to go ahead and get behind the dash here and actually pull out all the plugs that are in place. They'll all match up with their females and males. So you won't have to worry about getting them mixed up at all. So here are the connectors I had mentioned beforehand. You'll notice this little spade connector here and these round pin connectors. The full circle and the half circle. And there should be this other one hiding down here. It's three pin right here. Nothing too overcomplicated at all. Easy to put back on. They only go in one direction of course because they're specific connectors. But we now have of course the gauge cluster out of the car. It is only the four screws. It's four up top, three on the bottom. Set this face down. You don't want any of these panels falling out, of course. Now we're working with this. We're going to go ahead and take out the compensator board there, and I'll show you how to put in your jumper. You'll notice when taking out the screws to take off the actual cluster itself, you will be taking out this transistor that's grounded out to the cluster. No worries. It's just a three pin. It only goes in one way. To get out the compensator board itself, you may have to use needle nose. You want to watch for anything on the back. You don't want to bend too much of this stuff. It's all a little classic. There's little pins on the sides. I'll pull those out. And this whole compensator board should come out fairly easily. It's just old pin connectors. Pull out the pins on the side as you pull this forward towards yourself. And there we are. We have the whole board out. This is most likely trash unless you want to replace the board itself. You can fix the board if you're extremely savvy, or you can replace it. 
it's easy enough to look for the one and three pin. You have, if you're looking down in there, you can see one, two, three, four. You have your jumper here. You want to go on the fourth, right there. See if we can get these on with the needle nose, though. So you're working on a bit of a small space. If this makes you feel uneasy with having the open connectors, you can throw some heat shrink over it, but they won't move. We have it on the one pin. Now I want to jump over. We're going to the three pin right there. Whoop. Good firm push. There we are. Now I have the wire out of place there. You have it on the one and three pin, as you can tell there. So we'll go ahead and put this whole assembly back together, and I'll be back to you. As you can see, I have all seven of those screws back in place. Now the most fun part of getting this back in here is going to be getting these connectors on in the right way. You have a bit of a shimmying in there. I guess I should have cleaned this while I had it out and ease of access. But you know. The best part is getting these connectors lined back up properly. Now that we have the wires back in place, it's just a reverse of what you've previously done. Sliding the gauge cluster back in. Gotta push down on some areas and lift up in others. Slide it back in. You'll get those four screws in, of course. Now you have the four screws back in. Of course, it's just your simple connectors that you had before. The bulb will go back in place. Oh, we'll flip around here. The bulb will go back in place how it went out, just like so. And your connector can only go one way. Just simple push in clips, as long as all the pins are aligned. Only go one way. Press that guy on there firmly. And this one only goes on one way, like so. You'll feel which way it goes on. It's a little bit harder to see the inside of this one. There we are. Knob works as it should. Put your cover plates back on. Whichever way they may go. My plates are all messed up like I had said previously. got to get your tape on there. Of course, I should put new tape on it because they're just going to fall out again. But it's just a beater. Got to have a safe temperature gauge in a beater, though. Now, here's the real test. You can do this test before you put everything back together, or if you trust yourself, you can just go for it. Now that you have your whole assembly back together, you'll notice all the gauges are starting to get back into working condition. Temperature is finally going up to where it should be at. All of the gauges still work. Light bar up top still works. Everything works as it should. Here we are, your temperature gauge is now working. Seems to be up to temp to me. Well, there you have it for your simple DIY of temperature compensator board delete or bypass or jumper, whatever you'd like to name it. Now, of course, our temp gauge works. Back to beating. See you in the next video. Thanks for sticking around.